This program is brought to you by NewsWorks in cooperation with the City of Eau Claire. This program is simulcast on WRFPLP 101.9. This meeting of the Eau Claire City Council will come to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Beaton? Here. Emanuel? Here. McCabe? Here. Lincoln? Here. Mitchell? Here. Strobel? T. Walt? Von Hayden? Here. Well? Here. Worthman? Here. John? Here. Thank you, Madam City Clerk, and welcome everyone to the May 22nd, 2017 session of the Eau Claire City Council. During its Monday night session, the Council conducts public hearings and holds public input. Uh, and holds public input discussions in which we seek your ideas and your input uh, and a, uh, for our decision-making session, which occurs tomorrow afternoon in these chambers at 4 p.m. Um, tonight, Council will be inter entertaining some important discussion items, including a rezoning and a general and a, a rezoning for the proposed Marshfield Hospital, and we will also be considering some changes to Memorial High School on our agenda this afternoon. Um, if you wish to speak this afternoon during or this evening during our hearing, you do approach the podium after I introduce the item of interest to you. Begin by stating your name and your address and then speak about what is what is on your mind. Sometimes we have questions after you speak, so if you would linger at the podium for a minute, it gives me a chance to ask council members if they have questions. Our questions are just meant to clarify um, in our own mind the point that you were trying to make. If you just want to write your comments tonight, you can do so by filling out a blue comment sheet at the back of chambers. With that introduction, we will begin our work of the evening with item one, which is a public hearing regarding the vacation of a portion of 6th Street from Maple to the abandoned railroad right away. Mr. Silver. Good evening. Um, all right. The item tonight is for the public hearing uh, regarding the vacation of 6th Street from Maple Street here to the abandoned Chicago St. Paul, Minneapolis, and Omaha Railway right of way that is located here. Uh, this action to vacate was initiated to clean up discrepancies in our land records. Uh, some areas showed this parcel or this right of way had been vacated, some areas had shown it had not. Um, this right of way is unimproved for transportation and utility uh, use as well as pedestrian use. Uh, it was originally platted in 1884. Um, it has not been used uh, since then for those purposes. Uh, currently, there are no utilities within this right-of-way. The northerly end of the right-of-way has a cross slope, which is quite steep. Um, there is a 16-foot grade differential uh, as you are on the north side, which would make it uh, impractical to use as pedestrian access to a future trail that uh, may inhabit this right-of-way. That access would occur down in this location. Um, and there is uh, the proposed street vacation would not impact any of our future or current transportation or utility needs of the city. Uh, the adjacent property owners were notified of the uh, pending vacation and two of the property owners have contacted the city saying that um, they do not have any concerns with that. Uh, with that, I'll take any questions. Questions for Mr. Solberg? Member Mitchell. Thank you. So what happens to this uh, this piece of property? Uh, it would revert back on the uh, up to the center line and it would approximately look like this where this parcel would go to this uh, this portion of the right-of-way would go to this parcel and then these would split it so it would be it would in essence increase the size of the adjacent properties that it would be uh, reattached to. And I see no further questions. Thank you. Did anyone come to speak about the um, Maple Street vacation? I see. Seeing none, the chair will close item one. 
Item two is a public hearing on the proposed street utility and sidewalk improvements on Gibson Street, South Barstow to Graham Avenue. Mr. Sober. This project uh, is in conjunction with the Graham Avenue project that is being proposed in conjunction with the Graham Avenue project that was approved approximately a month ago. Um, just to refresh the history uh, for this, we originally were planning to include Graham Avenue and Gibson Street with our 2018 CIP construction along the Confluence Arts Center uh, for some private utilities uh, caused us to look at this portion of our street program and propose to move it to 2017 so we don't have this area constru under construction two years in a row, at least for the street portion of that. So with that, a brief history. Um, Gibson Street was originally, or was most recently constructed in 1983. Uh, in the portion under question today is from South Barstow Street to Graham Avenue. Uh, it was constructed uh, partially under the uh, South Barstow Street project in 2013 to approximately this limit here. Uh, the Graham Avenue project approved uh, approximately a month ago uh, requires construction up to the lower limit uh, for utility ties at tie ins So we're proposing to include this short section in between uh, just so we have everything wrapped up this year. Um, it was last constructed in 1983. The water main was replaced in 1983. It's in good condition and does not need to be replaced. If adjacent property owners request uh, water main tie-ins or new services, uh, they will be installed. The sanitary sewer dates to the early 1940s, is proposed to be replaced and sanitary sewer tie-ins will be, and services will be included with the project. The storm sewer is located primarily in the intersection of Graham Avenue and Gibson Street. A minor construction will be necessary to uh, include uh, the features for drainage that are necessary for the project. Um, <coughs> the current street has a concrete pavement. It's in deteriorated shape like much of our uh, early 1980s concrete pavement is downtown. Uh, the project proposes new concrete pavement as constructed to a cross section consistent with Graham Avenue, Eau Claire Street, and Barstow Street, uh, which is 40 feet uh, face to face. Uh, the existing cross section is 48 feet face to face. So um, all of these streets as they're being reconstructed are narrowed for travel, travel lanes and parking. And that extra width is going into the streetscape items uh, that you see on Barstow Street and Eau Claire Street. Uh, what, what this project proposes uh, because of the, the nature of construction with the Confluence Arts Center and trying to coordinate a number of different activities. Uh, we're proposing the concrete pavement and the curb and gutter and the sidewalk adjacent to the buildings. And the streetscape items that you would see in the orange are being proposed uh, to be included in the Graham Avenue project, the remainder of the Grand Avenue project proposed for next year. We, are, we will be working over the next months with the downtown businesses and the South Barstow bid uh, to see what exactly that streetscape will include. I think it will likely be very similar to what is on Barstow Street and Eau Claire Street. But to get the, this project ready uh, so we don't hold up construction with potential private utilities on Graham, uh, we haven't gone through the full stakeholder process for that um, to see if they would like just pavers and decorative lights or treescape or tree gate grates. Um, what type of pavers for the streetscape and so forth. So the areas of orange with this project uh, will be filled in with a temporary material so there isn't a trip hazard until the permanent streetscape can be uh, constructed when the theater is ready for us to have access on the outside and the rest of Graham Avenue is constructed. With that, I'll answer any questions. Questions for Mr. Solberg? Thank you. Did anyone come tonight to speak to the uh, Gibson Street sidewalk improvements, etc.? Seeing none, the chair will close item two. Item three on our agenda is a public hearing on the proposed site plan in a P public district for additions to Memorial High School. Mr. Tufty. Uh, this is Memorial High School uh, site at Claremont and Keith. 
and there's an aerial photo then of the high school. Uh, the additions that are being proposed are on the back side of the high school next to the gymnasium. And again, the high school, the main addition is at the entry into the gymnasium, and then two smaller additions uh, on the back side of that. Uh, detail of the larger addition to the front of the gymnasium entryway and then the smaller ones. And uh, rendering of what the addition will look like. There's also a narrative provided by applicant explaining the request in your packet. The project will result in the loss of six parking spaces. The letter indicates school district believes they have ample parking for the school and this minor loss will not impact their overall parking requirement. The parking requirement for a high school is based on a parking study. Uh, we would agree with applicant uh, that the minor loss here will not impact uh, parking particularly to the rear of the building. The plan commission has recommended approval of this site plan. Questions for Mr. Tufty. The plan for this entrance is primarily bus pickup and drop off? Uh, it's primarily to enhance the entry into uh, the gymnasium space to have more crowd waiting area things such as that. Plus there's some internal uh, remodeling that they're doing with the addition. It's for event? Events. Crowd mm -hmm. type stuff. Okay. Thank you. I see no questions. And did anyone come tonight to speak to the memorial proposed remodel? Seeing none, the chair will close item three. Item four on our agenda is a public hearing on a proposed ordinance rezoning property located at the northwest corner of Claremont Avenue and Craig Road from C3H to C3P and to adopt a general development plan for a hospital with an addition and a clinic and to amend the general development plan for property at 2116 Craig Road for a building addition and to amend the general development plan for property to the west for loading area, access drive, and accessory facilities. Mr. Tufty. Uh, this is the property at Claremont Avenue and Craig Road. Uh, the south parcel has C3H zoning and is proposed for rezoning. The north parcel has C3P zoning and is proposed for an amendment for an addition. And the west parcel also has C3P zoning and is proposed for an amendment for uh, accessory facilities. An aerial again showing Claremont Avenue and Craig Road. This is the former Plaza Hotel, which has been removed, and the hospital with clinic is under construction at that site. This is Marshfield Clinic's facility. They have a uh, nursing facility on the south end of that that is proposed for another addition. This is the former Triple Play Sports facility, which has been demolished and is the access for loading docks and accessory facilities. Uh, this is the overall plan then for the property, Claremont, Craig Road. This is the hospital with cancer center clinic that are under construction. This is the proposed addition on the north end of the hospital with the loading docks. Uh, this is the existing clinic nursing facility and its proposed addition on the south wall of that facility. And that's the former triple play and the access drive coming into the loading docks with turnaround the accessory facilities on that parcel. And there's a detail then showing again the hospital which is under construction, uh, the hospital addition to the north with the loading dock facilities, the MRI drive along the west side of the hospital where they'll park the MRI facility or truck next to the hospital. The addition on the south side of the nursing facility to the north, the access drive coming into the site with turnaround and the accessory facilities next to it. Again, there's a letter from applicant explaining the request in your packet. 
the application the, uh, proposes then to rezone the parcel with the hospital and cancer center under construction from a C3H to a C3P. A C3H essentially established special setbacks. The proposed C3P zoning will maintain those special setbacks on this property. The allowed uses in all under des design standards in a C3H district are the same as a C3P district. That's a 5,300 square foot addition on the north wall of the hospital that's under construction. And applicant's letter states that addition is for loading dock and mechanical space. There's no parking requirement for that addition. The parking requirement for the hospital is 66 stalls and that is provided with a 95 stall parking lot shown on the site plan for their facility. Uh, this MRI access drive is shown on the west side of the building. They'll be parking that semi-trailer in that access drive with the MRI in it. The application then also proposes to amend the general development plan for the nursing facility and clinic to the north to allow this addition on the south wall of that building. The parking requirement for that addition is noted as three stalls. The existing parking requirement for the skilled nursing facility and clinic is 520 stalls. They have 633 stalls on their site, plus their parking lot across Craig Road to the east. That leaves them 133 extra stalls available. They're using 97 of those stalls for the cancer clinic, which is under construction next to the hospital. That leaves them 16 stalls available for this addition. They need three parking stalls for it. The application then also proposes to amend the general development plan for the property to the west, which used to be triple play sports. And it shows then the access road coming into the loading dock facility with turnaround and these accessory facilities, which are generators, underground fuel tanks, cooling facilities such as that. The comprehensive plan does designate the site as being appropriate for commercial development. Uh, the portion of the report uh, that the reviews the site plan is also within your packet. The plan commission has recommended approval of the rezoning and general development plan amendments. And the site plan was approved by the plan commission with the conditions noted in the draft letter to applicant. With that, I'd answer any questions. Councilmember Pete. Thank you. Um, is, can you help me um, understand this map a little bit? Sure. Um, down at the kind of uh, the intersection with uh, North Frontage. Um, yeah, okay. So um, if you would go back to the other map again okay. for me, please. So um, if I'm seeing this correctly, the, the entrance into the loading dock area is also intersecting with Claremont yes. and, and the road. Okay. Um, I did get a call from the constituent with some concerns with truck traffic going through that intersection that is not um, um, controlled. And I know that this is a zoning mm -hmm. issue, but um, was there any discussion of safety um, at the Planning Commission? Uh, yes. Uh, this is a, an existing driveway that uh, is actually on Pizza Hut's property, which is right next to it. And the uh, clinic has an access easement to use that driveway. Uh, we actually believe the traffic will be significantly less for the loading dock facility in comparison to the previous traffic that used to go to the triple play sports, which was a mini golf and batting cage facility. It will be trucks, but it'll be significantly less. There was a traffic impact analysis conducted for this entire facility as part of the site plans for the hospital and clinic, and that also verified uh, those thoughts. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Yep. So Member Stroll. Thank you. Um, Mr. Tufty, did you say that that is not a street next to Pizza Hut, that that's a private drive? That's correct. That's an access easement on Pizza Hut's property that has been there for the former Triple Play Sports and is now owned by Marshfield Clinic. So they, they have guaranteed access? Yes. Okay. Are there questions? I see none. Thank you. There are members of the public who wish to came, who wish to speak on the proposed rezoning and amendments to the general development plan.
Uh, Drew Ryberg, 1213 Timber, Eau Claire. I had a question and probably don't understand the rules as a, entirely as I should, but my understanding is that the parking lot east of uh, Craig Road is still a part of that change that occurred to go to C3P back in 2006, and specifically under Z1356-06. And maybe I'd put a question to Mr. Tufty about that point. Is that correct, sir? Yes. All right. That's the only question I had, the only clarification I see. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Anyone else uh, here to speak to the proposal? There being none, as is the case sometimes, that we have a short meeting tonight, and that brings to a close our agenda items. Right? And uh, we thank members of the public who came uh, to be with us this evening. There being no further business to come before this body and a motion by Councilmember Emanuel, seconded by Councilmember Beaton, we are adjourned without objection. The Eau Claire City Council meeting will return in a moment. Newsworks is made possible by continuing community support. If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, please contact us via phone at 715-839-5067 or online at valleymediaworks.org. This program is simulcast on WRFPLP 101.9 FM. We now return you to the Eau Claire City Council meeting. This meeting of the Eau Claire City Council will come to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Beaton. Here. Emanuel. Here. Here. Quintana. Here. Mitchell. Here. Strobel. Here. Seawalk. Von Hayden. Here. Well. Here. Workman. Here. Job. Here. Thank you, Madam City Clerk, and welcome everyone to the Tuesday, May 23rd, 2017 legislative session of the Eau Claire City Council. During its legislative session, the council deliberates and takes action on the agenda items before us. We have prepared for this responsibility by working with citizens and collaborating with staff and reading the considerable amount of materials in our packet. And we arrive ready today to exercise our, our duty. We welcome citizens who are joining us in chambers and are grateful to community television as always for streaming and broadcasting these proceedings for citizens who cannot attend in person. Uh, we do have important items on our agenda as usual, so we will begin. The first order of business is the consent agenda. Council members have questions or wish to remove an item for a separate consideration. On a motion then by Councilmember Emanuel, seconded by Councilmember Beaton, the consent agenda is moved. Discussion? And there being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Beaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. Kincaid? Aye. Klinghammer? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. Von Hayden? Aye. Wells? Aye. Workman? Aye. John? Aye. And the consent agenda is passed. I have two proclamations this afternoon. I would like to start by inviting Kirk Jansen to the podium with me. Usually, I just read part of the proclamation while there's, we put together, usually Ms. Merle puts together a little picture of Indiana, I guess. And then if you want to say a few words. Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, but you can say it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. The... The first proclamation has to do with um, bicycle and pedestrian uh, trafficking, traffic in our community. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Strike that. <laughs> I'll read uh, 
an edited version of the proclamation. Whereas the City of Eau Claire Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee is promoting greater public awareness of the benefits of bicycling to encourage more people to use their bicycles and leave their vehicles at home. And the City of Eau Claire was designated as a bicycle friendly community in 2011 and 2015. It's important to educate both cyclists and motorists regarding the proper opera operation of bicycles on city streets to ensure the safety of all bicyclists. And bicycle commuting, commuting is an effective means to improve air quality, reduce traffic and noise, conserve energy, and encourage a healthier lifestyle. Therefore, the City Council does hereby proclaim the week of June 4th through the 10th Wisconsin Bike Week in the City of Eau Claire. Thanks, hi everybody. My name is Kirk Jansen. I'm a member of the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission. I wanted to thank the council for today's proclamation. Wisconsin Bike Week in June is going to be an action-packed week to celebrate all things bicycling. We have representatives from many organizations coordinating activities during that week, including these sponsors from the year past, uh, Eau Claire's BPAC, Chippewa Valley Transit Alliance, the Wisconsin Bike Fed, Volume 1, the local store, and Chippewa Valley Family, West, Century, West Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission, Friends of the Chippewa River State Trail, Bike Chippewa Valley, the Chippewa Off-Road Bike Association, Soul Brewed Coffee Roasters, the Eau Claire Express, the Pie Riders, and the Chippewa Valley Museum. New partners this year include the City of Altoona and the Shift Cyclery and Coffee Bar. I will uh, pass around a draft of the events, or maybe I'll just leave them with Kathy. Uh, of all the events we have planned so far, there's something going on every day that week, um, including group mountain bike rides, meet and greets, hands-on bike maintenance classes, an opportunity to weigh in on our upcoming bike map changes, and community rides to concerts, parks, ball games, and beaches. If you ride along to the express game, you get in free, just saying. A final schedule and complete sponsor list will be made available as we get closer to Wisconsin Bike Week. Over the last year, our communities made fantastic progress to promote and encourage biking in the area. We have a dedicated group of people working to build on that progress. A major project in the last few meetings has been to study the 2010 Bicycle and Pedestrian Plan alongside the 2015 bike map to incorporate new construction projects and additional bike routes across the city to develop citywide options for safe biking. We continue to hear reports on relevant CIP projects that affect biking in Eau Claire and weigh in on options and ideas for the future. Thanks again for drawing attention to Bike Week, and we will continue to support, defend, and educate the community on the use of trails, roads, and paths in a safe way for both bikers and pedestrians. Thank you. Another proclamation, and would ask um, Carrie Odom and Philip Raychek to meet me at the podium. Welcome. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Um, so we have a little pictorial thing that for people to look at while I read the proclamation in um, in part, and then I hope you have a few words to say. Okay. Super. get myself organized here. Whereas play is a valuable part of a child's healthy development and a crucial factor in overall well-being for children, and children who play do better in school, develop cognitive skills that are linked to learning and academic performance, learn social skills that help them become happy and well-adjusted adults, and are spontaneous and self and spontaneous and self-motivated play is on the decline in our country. Children are at our, and we realize, however, that children are our most valuable resource and that we must promote and ensure an abundance of safe and accessible place bases for all children. And Mr. Philip Recheck, a former member of the Eau Claire Chamber, 
Week of Commerce Leadership Eau Claire Class of 2016 Gold Team worked this year to apply for and receive Playful City USA designation for the City of Eau Claire. The Playful City USA designation, a nationally recognized achievement, encourages all citizens to participate, advocate, and learn more about the importance of play in our daily lives. Now therefore, the City Council and the citizens of Eau Claire urge all citizens to celebrate and support play spaces and playgrounds for the well-being of this and future generations. Congratulations. Thank you. Again, my name is Phil Rechek. I am with the Children's Museum of Eau Claire. And the Children's Museum of Eau Claire, uh, in addition to Eau Claire Parks and Recs, we are honored to be a location uh, that promotes play in our community. We are uh, very excited to help provide the uh, active play that kids need to thrive. Um, and we are just very happy to be part of the Playful City USA uh, process. So thank you. Um, I'll just um, also say on behalf of the Community Services Department, thank you for the City Council support in this recognition. Um, and I'm sure some of you remember going to the playgrounds as young children, and that's our goal is to get kids to go out there and do that again. So thank you again. Thank you both. We continue our work this afternoon with uh, our business agenda, which begins with item number 13, a, resolu a resolution granting a temporary expansion of a class, uh, a combination Class B fermented malt beverage and Class A cabaret license to Grizzlies Milwaukee Burger Company for the Bacon Beer Curd Bloody Mary Fest on June 2nd. Mr. Nick. EMTs on standby. Uh, thank you, uh, standing in for Mr. Uh, Mr. Ho for this uh, this afternoon. License review did uh, review this uh, application. It is at Milwaukee Burger Company, uh, East Claremont Avenue. They're applying for a temporary expansion on their their private property for the Bacon Beer Curd Bloody Mary Fest, uh, June second. It is in their parking lot. Uh, expansion will occur within a fenced-in area uh, south of Milwaukee Burger between you know, their main building and uh, Claremont Avenue. Uh, event is from 4 till 8 p.m. As I indicated in the parking lot, there will be uh, a tent and fenced area, live music, beverages, food uh, served from the restaurant. Uh, they expect perhaps upwards of uh, 200 people at the event. There will be IDs checked, uh, wristband. The event is only for those 21 and over, but again, IDs will, will be checked and they'll be wristbanded <coughs> anyway, and otherwise uh, following our uh, safe server uh, guidelines. So ID check, uh, 21 and over, signs posted of no alcohol outside of the fenced area, uh, licensed bartenders, and uh, again, otherwise following safe and responsible beverage service. Uh, with that and checks from health department and fire on the, uh, the tent, uh, license review has no objection um, available for any questions. If I can answer them, I am not sure if the applicant is present. It looks like she is. Thank you, Mr. Nick. Questions? This is a new event for us. Does do you wish to speak about your event? Yeah, I guess we can. Can we just come up here? Yep. You could Hi, identify everyone. your name and your address and uh, tell us a little bit about your event. Absolutely. Um, so my name is Kelly Hoffman. I am the assistant general manager of Milwaukee Burger Company. Um, this is our first time of doing this event. We were 
very much inspired from a local event that we did in Wassa a couple years ago, so we wanted to bring it here to the Eau Claire area. But we're going to be tapping nine exclusive beers. Um, we're going to be serving candied bacon with all different flavors. We're going to be doing uh, our famous Bloody Marys and then, of course, our cheese curds as well. And we're going to have the dweebs come and rock out on the lot with us. We figured it'd be a great way to kick off the summer with a little outdoor fun. So, yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you, you Ms. Hoffman, for describing your event for us a little bit. What was that? Thank you for oh, yeah. describing your event, and um, we wish you the best. Hey, awesome. <laughs> I see no questions. Okay. On a motion then by Council Member Weld, seconded by Council Member Klinkhammer, item 13 is moved. Discussion? There being none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Emanuel. Aye. Kincaid. Aye. Aye. Mitchell. Aye. Strobel. Aye. Aye. Well. Aye. Worthman. Aye. John. Aye. Beaton. Aye. And that resolution passes. Item 14 is a resolution authorizing the Oxbow Hotel in Volume 1 to conduct the Obo concert event on June 15th. Hopefully I didn't crucify that name too much. <laughs> Mr. Pippinger. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The special event application before you is a new event. The Oxbow is a music concert and block party next to the Oxbow Hotel. This event will occur on Thursday, June 15th from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. and will take place on Galloway Street from North Farwell Street to Dewey Street. This is the area, the 500 block of Galloway Street that will be blockaded off or barricaded off here. The entire area will have a fenced-in area. Um, this is North Farwell. This is Dewey and this is Galloway. Um, the areas where there will be food and drink will be in these areas here. This on the street, there will be no alcohol on the street. This will be the stage area. Also on the uh, south side of the area is a parking lot um, owned by Volume 1. We'll also have the food and drink and uh, some areas for porta -johns. Um, this will require a detour. Uh, the detour uh, coming from the east on Galloway Street, traffic will be detoured to the south, down to Eau Claire Street, back to South, south Farwell Street at this point, and then up to um, North Farwell if they're heading towards uh, Madison Street. Um, this area during our special event uh, meeting with the uh, applicant, it was determined that with the combination sidewalk and boulevard, we required barrels to push that northbound lane of traffic uh, to the west. There's actually two lanes that run through there, so we'll be pushing all that traffic there. During the, uh, during the event itself, They'll be required to have two police officers on duty during this time at this location for traffic control also. Um, this event will require city council approval due to the expectation of more than 1,000 spectators, the selling and distributing of fermented malt beverages and wine, alcohol served after sunset or 8 p.m. and the event closing down a city street. Uh, the Special Events Committee recommended approval of this event at the May 10th meeting, and Mr. Nick Meyer is here from Volume 1 to answer any questions that you might have. First, uh, questions for you, Or Mr. And I'd Richard. be happy to answer some questions. Mm -hmm. Council Member Von Hayden. The police officers and the setup and all that, that will be billed to the event? Yes. So any costs that the city would incur above and beyond their normal costs for this would be passed on as a special event charge? That is correct. John. Thank you. Uh, is the concert inside the house or are they outside or they are on the street? The concert? Is it in the garage or in, in the house or are they on the street? It's actually on the street. Here's the, the stage area is right here. Uh -huh. um, we did have that was one of our concerns during the special event is okay. the, the noise issue and we um, encourage the group to go out and contact the neighbors okay. and also uh, make sure that if it becomes a nuisance it's going to be a problem for the event that so they're, they're aware 
that if the noise becomes a nuisance, it'd be an issue. And we will have police officers on, on site. Thank you. Council Member Strobel. Um, thank you. I have a couple of questions for Mr. Pippinger, and maybe when we're done with that, if I could ask Mr. Solberg a question too. Thank you. Um, um, it looks like a, a really great and well-organized event, but I, I've got some questions on the street closing, in, in particular the street. Um, do we have a policy on closing streets for any any activities, be they private, private activities, public activities? Um, um, can we close any street? regardless of volume, who decides that? Does the special event c committee decide that? Do we, I guess that's what I'm trying to get at for future reference. We, we do have on the special events uh, committee, someone from the engineering department and more specific, the, our traffic engineer. So at that point, uh, when we look at closing down a street, is it safe to do so? Can we do it and put in the the needed uh, detour routes, the protection to protect the public. And in this case, it was determined with the initial application and the way it was uh, written, uh, we, didn't, we didn't agree with that. So we actually required some additional uh, uh, lane changes and closures that, uh, that made this more safe for the event. Okay. And, um Maybe a follow-up on that, too. Also, um, I, I, I think you said that all the fees that the city incurs will be passed on to the event organizers. Are we, are we charging a fee to, to rent our street? I mean, I, I know we charge a fee if we lease out Carson Park or something like that. Is there any, any fee for that at all? In, the, in our fee and license uh, uh, policy, um, if we close down five blocks or more, there is a fee. If it is less than that, there is not a fee. Thank, thank you. I'll just see if there are more questions for Mr. Pippinger. Council Member Will. Uh, they mentioned the 1,000 people. Is, is there an occupancy limit on this event? Or if it grows beyond that, is, does it get to a point where they're going to stop admittance? Or? The, in the application, it said 2,000 would be the limit. Okay. So they'll sell tickets up to 2,000 and beyond that, it would stop? Correct. Okay. And then is it, is it will it be one lane then in front there of, or will it be two lane? Um, there'll actually, there's two lanes that run to the north. Um, when we, during the event, we're going to have barrels that run through this way to protect because this is a combination sidewalk boulevard area. And our, our concern there was that if there's a large amount of people coming or going, we were concerned about the safety there. So we moved that traffic out here and then also required uh, police officers for traffic control. Yeah. I would imagine it would be a busy crossing too. For... I, I would imagine that's yeah. going to happen, yes. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Council Member with me. Thank you, Council President. Uh, Mr. Pippinger, just following up on Council Member Strobel's question is, uh, when a request comes forward for utilization of a street for an event, is it generally given uh, is generally given a positive review, or is it is it does it depend on what traffic engineers think is safe? Like, it, it can I guess I didn't quite understand whether you generally say yes or no, or it just depends on whether it's safe. Again, with this applic when the application came in, we 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 made some changes to it because we didn't think it was safe. Uh, so when an application does come in, we, it gets reviewed by the committee. And we, like I said, we have some, we have our traffic engineer on the committee and they will make a determination if something needs to be done to make it safe. Or if it wasn't, if it was a situation where it just wasn't going to be a safe event, mm -hmm. it, at that point, uh, it would most likely be denied. Okay, uh, may I follow up? Uh, thank you. Um, just the the, the um, intersection of Galloway and South Farwell, I imagine that people are going to be pretty, there's a lot of cars that move through there, even without there being an event, and I imagine people are going to be extremely distracted by the fact that there's a concert going on there, and I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking, and you're, you're probably well aware that um, making that intersection safe with, you know, police officers or whatever, I think it's going to be really critical because 
I think that's already kind of a dangerous spot just with how many um, cars flow through there. So, one, one thing we're going to do in the morning as traffic's coming through uh, before they close this down, we're going to have a message board. So uh, folks that are coming through there, they're going to know that it's going to be closed down on their way home. Hmm. So they, at that point, they can make a conservative effort to maybe take an alternate route. Sure. Thank you. Did you have another question for Mr. Pepper? Sure. Um, I'm going to invite Mr. Meyer to the podium, but um, do you want to wait or ask your question? Okay. Mr. Meyer, Oxbow, the Oxbow um, concert. Yeah, hi, thanks. Very good job. Uh, yes, Nick Meyer, uh, East Side Hill, uh, and I'm one of the co owners of the Oxbow Hotel. Do you want me to describe the event or do you want me to answer questions? or? Sure. Um, yeah, as you see, this, this is an event that we had previously planned to do just within the green fencing that already exists on our own site. Uh, and it became apparent that there was quite a bit more demand and that perhaps the impact for downtown Eau Claire before the Eau Claire Festival, this is all on the eve of the Eau Claire Festival in June, um, that we could get a lot more people downtown, they could have a really great experience with the community and it could be an even more successful event that way. So we looked at expanding it uh, in this way. We had a very good uh, experience through the Special Events Committee as well as the Liquor License Review Committee and they both uh, offered some things that improved our plan. Uh, even beyond all the, the critical thinking that we had done. So all of those adjustments have been made. Uh, we have talked with um, the, the business groups in the area. We've talked with the neighborhood association that's representing that area. And we've begun to reach out to like home by home as well. Um, and once we have official approval, if we do, we'll be hand delivering a letter to, to the end. All of this whole block on Galloway Street uh, and the homes around here and this way. And then we're also reaching out to uh, the Phoenix Park their, their little association that they, unofficial association that they have as well. Um, so we are reaching out to the, to the neighbors as much as we can, uh, related mostly to that, any inconvenience that might have with the street closure, but also uh, the, the sound issue as well, and letting them know what to expect and when that would be wrapped up and um, all of those sorts of things. Um, other than that, we have a very aggressive staffing plan. We're very, benef uh, very benefited by the fact that Larson Companies uh, is the official management group of the Oxbow Hotel, so they have many other properties that they can draw upon to help beef up staffing for the event to make sure that it's as safe as possible. That includes a number of, of staff around the perimeter of the event uh, just to keep that safe, to keep things clean, to keep people moving along, uh, as well as the staff, the, the qualified bartending staff and everything that's serving inside and uh, security there as well. And I was also very thankful that the police department reached out about uh, policing this area, which, yeah, we're, we're certainly paying for that. Uh, but we've also invited them to also step inside uh, the area, which they don't really, I guess, do unless they're invited to on a, under normal circumstances. So they will also parole, patrol the insides of the event periodically as well, uh, which we welcome. If there's any other specific things, I'd love to answer any questions you might have. Questions for Mr. Meyer. Councilmember Worthman. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Mr. Meyer, for uh, all the work on this. Uh, can you give me a little more specific about the red fencing that's going to be put yeah. up? Is that essentially as a barrier so people can't see through to the concert? Correct. Yep. So the, the green fencing is existing fencing. Uh, the, the orange fencing is fencing that's placed on private property. So that is we are responsible for excuse me, responsible for that ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that we are getting, uh, it's a six foot high chain link fence from Market and Johnson that will also be, uh, have a material on it to obscure view as well under the, the current plan. The red fencing is city placed fencing and because that's a public property, they preferred to place that, those pieces on their own. Um, we're still working out if we will also place our private fencing and they'll do their barricades and things or, or what, but that's, that's the color coding of the fencing. And then this pink area is kind of a, like the backstage mm -hmm. area that is only an indoor outdoor backstage area that is also fenced off and secured. Thanks. And I see no further questions, but thank you. All right. Thank you. And then I believe Mr. Uh, Council Member Strobel has a question for Mr. Solberg. <clears throat> Mr. 
Mr. Silver, I, I just trying to get an idea on these the, the traffic counts on, on closing off Galloway Street, and I know engineering was involved with the uh, the events committee, but um, to me this is a, a an arterial street which carries a lot of traffic, and so my, my concerns, and then now I'm I'm hearing that we're closing off one lane of Farwell Street as well, which probably carries more traffic. So I'm, I'm trying to get a grip on how this is all going to work. If you can maybe help me on traffic counts. Um, sure. Um, this is a book that's published by the um, Department of Transportation for traffic counts um, in the area. In essence, Galloway Street and, and the location that they are requesting the closure uh, carries, uh, you know, on, on this particular day, it carried 4,600 cars per day. In general, about 5,000 cars a day. About the same amount of traffic that occurs on Barstow Street. Um, Galloway Street does have a more concentrated um, stream of traffic in in the morning. And then as people leave in the evening, um, it's more diverted through the downtown and out. But <clears throat> it is a collector um, trending up towards a minor arterial route into the downtown of Eau Claire along with Birch Street. Um, closing it, uh, we would have had significantly more concerns with closing it uh, for the morning peak rush hour, uh, but there are there will be impacts to traffic and then detour down around on Dewey Street. Uh, for comparison, we did have some work uh, last fall from XL Energy uh, in downtown um, in the alleys that were adjacent to this area. Um, and we had a similar lane closure uh, along Farwell Street for a duration of construction and then also had Farwell Street detoured for some of the, for a few days of the main uh, traffic. So it, it is, <clears throat> anytime we affect the streets in this area, it does affect traffic down there. It, it, it's an inconvenience, but it's one that we felt um, comfortable with the changes that were made to the event that uh, for this evening, um, in, in the, the afternoon, I guess it's closing in the late morning after the morning peak that it wouldn't present a safety concern f for us. What about that one lane closure on Farwell Street? I mean, those lights are are tough right there <laughs> anywhere. Are the police going to sort of, can you interrupt those lights? Because, you know, you, you drop it down to one lane and then you have the detour going on. And then the other question I was going to have for you is Thursday night is also music in the park. Mm -hmm. um, I know we fill up our parking ramp and every place else around there. And, and so how does that, how is that all going to work? Well, certainly if there are events, if we have large events, uh, police always have the ability to uh, direct traffic manually around and have traffic go by manual methods as opposed to following the signals at that location. So that would be an option if there were uh, problems with the signals uh, during a, the peak rush hour in the evening. As far as the, tr the, the concert in the park, uh, we have our parking ramp is located here. Uh, so. If you're coming in on Galloway Street, you may experience some delay coming down to Dewey Street and going over. Um, otherwise, if you're coming from the south, we would urge uh, patrons for the concert to cross at Barstow Street and enter our parking ramp, and then also if Block 7 is available for parking at that location, as well as up along Madison Street. So it will, it will present, um, you know, an obviously detour, anytime a traffic's detoured around uh, the site for event goers, coming in on Galloway Street uh, for the concert in the park. Um, but there's, there should be other adequate routes to, to get into that area. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Silver. Seeing no further questions then, on a motion by Council Member Von Hayden, seconded by Council Member Mitchell, item 14 is moved. Discussion? Being non clerk, please call. Oh, Council Member Stroke. I, I do just a little bit for my fellow council members, maybe, and, and um, I, I just I think it's a, a great event. It looks like it's very well organized. I comp my compliments to Mr. Meyer and his, his uh, fellow organizers there. It looks very well organized. I have a concern with the council and or the city not necessarily having a, a set policy on street closures for events. Um, you know, I guess my question would be if, if playmakers down on Graham wanted to close off that street and, and hire a band, would we allow it? Um, I know a couple of years ago, I think a downtown group wanted to close off a Wisconsin Street over by Phoenix Park, and the, 
it wasn't allowed and they had to have their event in the uh, the Haymarket parking lot um, and so I think it'd be better and for us if we had a policy on, on what streets with what traffic patterns can be closed off are we going to charge for those streets I mean it's it's a major arterial street we charge for parks if we're going to do it for a private group for profit um, no matter how much we like the event I mean should should we be charging for something like that so I I guess for this particular event I would probably support it today but I guess I'm going to ask maybe my fellow council members and staff to maybe come up with something for us to make this uh, a, an even and fair policy if and when it comes before us again because I think you know it, it may come before us again the firehouse right now rents rents a parking lot downtown to have bands sometimes um, maybe they'd want to close Grand Mav. How are we going to look at something like that? I, I just think it'd help us make our decisions easier next time. Thank you. Council Member Worth. Thank you, Council President. And I'm sort of in the same boat. I'd like to know, I think that we're going to get a lot more requests like this, and I'd like to know um, how we're going to handle those and what our policy is and create, a, create some more predictability for groups that are likely to request a similar sort of thing. Any further discussion? Council Member Mitchell. Thank you. I agree with both of my fellow council members, but I wouldn't want my agreement to suggest that I think closing a street is a bad idea. I think it's a really good idea if it can be safe and well done. So I hope that if we do look at a policy, it's with the understanding that we like closing streets for public events in the summertime, or I do. And there being no further discussion, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Kincaid. Aye. Clint Hammer. Aye. Mitchell. Aye. Strobel. Aye. Von Hayden. Aye. Well. Aye. Wernman. Aye. John. Aye. Eaton. Aye. Emanuel. Aye. And that resolution passes. A related resolution, item 15, is granting a temporary expansion of a co combination class B, Mount Mever Malt Beverage and Class A Cabaret license to the Oxbow Hotel for the Oxbow concert. Mr. Nick. Thank you again. Uh, pleased to stand in for Mr. Hofer. And while I was not uh, president license review, I, I did work on this event. And uh, again, want to thank um, Mr. Myers for being uh, very receptive to making some alterations at, at our request that allows us to be able to recommend uh, the license expansion. Um, the uh, the map was previously up there. I guess you the color version. Thank you, Ms. Merle, and or Mr. Pippinger. Hmm. Unnecessary zoom. There we go. So on the expansion issue. As Mr. Meyer indicated, on the northern portion that's mostly enclosed by the uh, green existing fencing, uh, the, uh, the Oxbow and, and uh, its operations have an existing alcohol license. Their request as modified is to expand it onto the southerly portion, uh, shown uh, enclosed with the uh, orange fencing. Uh, alcohol in between on uh, the right-of-way, uh, the section of Galloway being closed, uh, will not be permitted uh, other than uh, for um, uh, transit uh, in the, the backstage uh, area. So in terms of moving it from their licensed, existing license premise down to the, the food and beverage uh, area on, on the southern parking lot, that, that's the only area that it will be permitted. With that, that change, otherwise uh, the event is, is, as previously described, it is a, a large event and uh, drew our attention as well in, in terms of its planning on a, on a street, uh, but with alcohol off of it, at least in terms of the licensing issue, uh, the committee has no objection. Uh, the hotel uh, is well staffed, uh, has additional resources through Larson's companies, as previously noted by Mr. Meyer. Uh, it will be an event unlike the previous expansion uh, that does have both uh, those uh, of age, those over 21, and those under 21 being allowed on premise. So there's a heightened concern there on uh, 
checking uh, wristbanding, which will be uh, conducted, uh, but then also oversight of that area. So uh, key importance to maintain uh, uh, oversight is, again, Mr. Meyer was at the podium earlier indicating he would do. Uh, the responsibility on that is on the license holder to make sure they're using uh, a safe uh, beverage service license to make sure those underage are not being served and that those who are being served are consuming in moderation. Uh, as indicated in the license review committee, uh, they're indicating the gates will not only be monitored, but that there will be uh, uh, staff and volunteers moving throughout the grounds. Uh, uh, licensed bartenders will, will be uh, on duty in, in both the licensed premise and the expanded premise in the southerly parking lot. Uh, Mr. Myers noted uh, that neighbors either have been or will be further notified of the event and music will uh, end no later than 11 p.m. In terms of expectations of the licensee and safe beverage service, uh, it is expected, as it is with all our licensed establishments, that they will check ID uh, and wristband those uh, and only serve those 21 and older. They will limit the event space to no more than 2,000 persons. And they will maintain safe and responsible beverage service practices, not allow anyone under 21 to consume, even if they are with an adult or guardian. And alcohol cannot be uh, either sold, uh, possessed, or consumed on the Galloway Street right-of-way from uh, sidewalk to sidewalk. Uh, both parking lots uh, will be secured, as noted uh, in the overhead there. And as already referenced, but uh, just finally that, uh, again, music will end by 11 p.m. So with those notations, license review has no objection. And happy to answer any questions that you may have. Or again, uh, license or, uh, or event organizers are present to answer questions. Council Member Beaton. Thank you. Um, Mr. Nick, I'm, I'm wondering why um, alcohol isn't allowed on the street and how that will be enforced at the event. Yeah, the uh, uh, licensed uh, uh, establishment such as this, and really even for any special event, we have uh, an ordinances and standing policies that prevent alcohol uh, on our streets. And um, in terms of its enforcement, uh, that is ultimately the responsibility of the event organizers. So they, they have it fenced uh, to the extent it, it isn't maintained in that way. Uh, they're ultimately held responsible through either direct enforcement or uh, the uh, inability to hold events in the future. We also will have law enforcement uh, police officers on premise, and if we have alcohol uh, open intoxicants out on our right-of-ways, uh, uh, we'll enforce and can issue individual citations just as we would on, on Water Street or Niagara or Chippewa uh, on a nightly basis. And I see no further questions on a motion by Council Member Strobel. Seconded by Council Member Zhang. Item 15 is moved. Further discussion? And there being none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Clay Hammer. Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. Don Hayden? Aye. Weld? Aye. Worthman? Aye. Zhang? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. Kincaid? Aye. And that resolution passes. The best of luck on your event. Item 16 is a resolution authorizing the Ellie Phillips Memorial Public Library to conduct the Library Maker Fest on August 15th. Mr. Pippinger. The special event application before you is this, another new event. Uh, the Library Maker Fest is a free family friendly event held by the Ellie Phillips uh, Memorial Library and will feature the Chippewa Valley Technical College Mobile Manufacturing Laboratory. The lab will be staffed and have demonstrations and interactions with specialized equi equipment such as robots, machine tooling, virtual welder, 3D printer, and so much more. Uh, the event will occur on Tuesday, August 15th from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m and will take place on Eau Claire Street in front of Ellie Phillips Memorial Library. Eau Claire Street will be closed and barricaded off during this event. This is the location. Uh, the one request was to keep the bank drive-through open at the U.S. Bank, uh, I think that's U.S. Bank, 
right there. The drive through through here was going to be kept open. There was a request for a, a detour route. Uh, and basically because it's uh, the street goes through and there's a Grand Avenue uh, at this end, uh, southbound traffic from on Dewey Street would come up to Grand Avenue, go to the west, back to Farwell Street, or it could go up to Main Street uh, and take a take a right there going to the south southwest. Traffic coming to the north on Farwell uh, because there is a right turning movement through here and we're bringing the traffic from the bank through. We're moving that out because again, there's two lanes there during this time. We'll be moving that out and moving it over to the one lane and then back over into the two lane movement. There's also a left-handed traffic movement here with the lights going to Eau Claire Street and that would actually be, be barreled off. So that that ability to turn on that lane wouldn't be, but we'd still have the two lanes uh, going to the south. Um, this event will, will require city council approval due to the event closing down a city street. Uh, the special events committee approved this event and again uh, at our meeting because we did see some, some issues with the uh, initial application. Our uh, city traffic engineer made some changes on this to make sure that this was going to be a safe traffic movement. Um, Ms. Pamela Westby is here to answer any questions. Uh, she's the applicant for this, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you'd have also. Questions for Mr. Pippinger? I see none. Ms. Wesby, would you like to talk about your new event a little bit? Sure. Um, our Dabble Box Makerspace opened in January, and our goal was to bring in uh, community partners. And through a series of conversations with the Chippewa Valley Technical School, we it became evident that bringing the lab into the mix we could um, emphasize and and expand the the program even more and by doing that um, outside and adjacent to the library we can um, bring traffic into the library into our dabble box and this will also once this uh, um, event is approved, then we can invite other community partners to take part in this as well. So, any questions? Sounds wonderful. All right. Uh, Council Member Strobel has a question. Did you say dabble box? Right. Could you could you tell me what that is? Sure. The dabble box is um, a space designed for growing hands-on learning, supporting science, technology, engineering, art, and math. So it's STEAM. And so we offer classes and open lab time that um, includes um, some high-tech equipment and low-tech. So anything from a sewing machine to robotics and 3D printer. Um, and that began in January. Uh, this summer we have classes offered through the Eau Claire Area School District. We're partnering with them to offer classes targeted at the middle school age children where we have found there's a gap in offerings for that age group. And the enrollment was um, so popular that we expanded that to five weeks instead of three weeks. Um, there's definitely a need and an interest in the community for this type of learning, and we're very excited about where this will go. Well, thank you. I'm glad mm -hmm. I asked. That was very informative. <laughs> nice job. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wesby. And there being no further questions on a motion by Councilmember Worthman, seconded by Councilmember Emanuel. Item 16 is moved. Discussion? And there being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Mitchell. 
Aye. Strobel. Aye. Aye. Well. Aye. Workman. Aye. John. Aye. Beaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. Kincaid? Aye. Play camera? Aye. And that resolution passes. Good luck with your event. <laughs> Item 17 is a resolution approving the 2017 Community Development Block Grant and Home Programs Grant Funding Appropriations. Mr. Jonathan. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, we were here uh, last month, about 30 days ago, and we presented our uh, allocations for the CDBG and home program uh, at that time. Um, it began our 30-day comment period uh, where we took comments, if any, and we are here today to present our um, amended request for funding. Um, we had one request to amend from the city manager, and that is reflected here. Questions for Mr. Jonathan? I see none. Okay. Thank you. On a motion and by Council, let's see, where are we? Council Member Beaton? Seconded by Council Member Weld. Item 17 is moved and discussion is in order. Council Member Mitchell. Uh, Madam President, I'd like to uh, make an amendment to, to this item. Or unless you'd like to have some discussion first. Um, I believe I asked for a discussion, but there doesn't seem to be any, so I think amendment might be in order. Um, I would like to move to amend the 2017 CDBG funding appropriations by increasing the intensified code housing uh, enforcement program for the health department by $14,200, which was their request for this year, and do that by decreasing their residential housing rehabilitation program by $14,200. If I get a second, I'll talk about it. Second. A second by Council Member Emanuel. And to your motion, Council Member Mitchell. Thank you. The last time this uh, program was uh, um, funding was increased was in 2015. The program itself goes back to 1980 and uh, came as a result of neighborhoods, uh, particularly low-income neighborhoods, of needing some uh, help from the health department to upgrade and improve their housing. Uh, as I said, the health department requested this money. It, it funds 75% of a position uh, for inspecting and uh, re-inspecting. And uh, the other 25% is paid for uh, out of the levy by the health department. Um, I think that the block grant program is a particularly uh, good and valid place uh, to fund this program. Um, we saw just recently in the fire on Madison Street how important having uh, inspectors from the housing uh, department involved in our community can be. Sometimes, as in that case, it, it could be life and death. Um, we're also focusing in our community on poverty, and one of, the, one of the things that a city can do to mitigate the effects of poverty is to improve the housing stock. And this program has been very successful in doing that. So I, I would urge my fellow council members to support this amendment. Thank you, Councilmember Mitchell. Further discussion? Councilmember Van Aden. Uh, I have a question for Mr. Jonathan. Uh, based on this request, what we have here, moving the funds from one program to another, what impact does this have on the other program? It basically reduces our home rehabilitation program dollars um, to provide that additional funding to the health department. And, and it, we, we, it is something that we can do. It, it, it will have not, I, obviously it, it'll reduce the amount you have for the home rehabilitation, but you still have sufficient funds we'll have in su that program to accomplish the goals you're currently anticipating doing? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Council 
Councilmember Mitchell. Thank you. I should have mentioned that that rehab program has $244,000 in it. And um, as it's going this year, that money will not all be spent. So there, there will be carryover money as well. So. Is there a discussion on the motion to amend? Councilmember Emanuel. Thank you, Madam President. And thank you, Councilmember Mitchell, for bringing this forward. I think our community will see a greater return on investment with this allocation than with inspectors looking at ways that homes can be improved versus one significant thing being improved on a home. I think several more homes will be improved because of this. So I think it's a really good usage of the money. And I saw Mr. Nix like. Sorry, just a quick point of order that uh, still need a main motion. Oh, no, I thought, oh, I think I moved it. My apologies. Yeah, that's fine. I did, right? Okay. <laughs> um, further, dis we're discussing the motion to amend. Councilmember Weld. Thank mm -hmm. you, Council President. Uh, yeah, again, I, th I think over the last couple of years, especially, we've really looked and asked the council for for that additional support financially, so that the code enforcement and the housing stock can be can be maintained. I know that. Um, the, the neighborhood associations have asked for it as well in the past, and so I'm in support of it. And I think, I think those dollars will go uh, be put to a good use. So. And further discussion on the motion. There being none, clerk, please call the roll on the motion to amend. Did you, do you have, have it clarified? Okay. Madam, Madam President. Madam. Oh, Councilmember Klinkhammer. Uh, to clarify my thinking. Uh, does, uh, does this go to 24200 or is it a total of 14200 There's already Mitchell. 10. Councilmember Mitchell? My, my, I'm sorry. Are you ready? My amendment is, is um, strictly for the intensified housing, housing code enforcement program, which is a program that's on been on the list of uh, appropriations for years and regardless of what happens with rental registration and the rest of it this program has will I hope will con will have to continue and there being no further discussion clerk uh, madam clerk please call the roll councilmember Strobel aye 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 Weld aye Worthman aye John aye Eaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. McCabe? Aye. Aye. Mitchell? Aye. And that motion to amend passes uh, unanimously tonight. We're back to the resolution as amended. Further discussion? And there being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Von Hayden? Aye. Weld? Aye. Worthman? Aye. John? Aye. Eaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. McCabe? Aye. Aye. Claycammer? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. And that resolution passes. Item 17 is a resolution approving the 20, oh, sorry, item 18. Sorry about that. Item 18. Don't want to relive that. A resolution approving the vacation of 6th Street from Maple to the abandoned railroad right away. Questions uh, about this item from last evening? On a motion on my council member Klinkhammer, seconded by council member Von Hayden. The item is moved and discussion is in order. There being non clerk, please call the roll. Council member Well? Aye. Worthman? Aye. John? Aye. Eaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. McCabe? Aye. Klinkhammer? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. Von Hayden? Aye. And that resolution passes. Uh, item 19 is a related resolution releasing utility easements within a portion of 6th Street from Maple to the abandoned right-of-way. <coughs> Mr. Solberg, is there a presentation about this? Answer questions, Okay. Uh, if there are questions, Mr. Solberg will answer. Otherwise, on a motion by Councilmember Mitchell, seconded by Councilmember Strobel. Item 19 is moved. And there being no discussion, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Worthman? Aye. John? Aye. Eaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. McCabe? Aye. Clinkhammer? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. Von Hayden? Aye. 
Well. Aye. And that resolution passes. Item 20 is a resolution approving the project and levying special assessments for street and utility improvements on Gibson Street, South Barstow to Graham. Mr. Soberg presented the project to us last evening. Do council members have questions? On a motion then by council member Zhang, seconded by council member Worthman. Item 20 is moved. Discussion? There being non clerk, please call the roll. Council member Zhang? Aye. Eaton? Aye. Emmanuel? Aye. Kincaid? Aye. Clint Hammer? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Abstain. Don Hayden? Aye. Well? Aye. Worthman? Aye. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That resolution passes. Item 22 is a resolution approving an agreement with, yeah, um, with the University of Wisconsin Eau Claire for participation in the Career Ready Internship Program and authorizing an appropriation for employment costs. Mr. Burke. Excuse. Oh. Excuse me. 22? Uh, yeah, uh, 21, ordering sidewalk. Oh, I forgot sidewalks. Wow, I'm kind of off tonight. Apologize. <laughs> okay, 21, uh, resolution ordering sidewalks on Gibson Street. Any questions about sidewalks on Gibson Street? Okay, good. On a motion then by Council Member Emanuel. Am I around to you? Sure. All right. Uh, seconded by Council Member Beaton. Item 21 is moved. Anyone want to talk about sidewalks? No. Yes. Clerk, please <laughs> call the roll. Council no. <laughs> Aye. Emanuel. Aye. Kincaid. Aye. Hammer. Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Abstain. Don Hayden? Aye. Well? Aye. Workman? Aye. John? Aye. And that resolution passes. Okay, item 22 I already introduced, and I would invite Mr. Burke to the podium. Good afternoon, evening. Good afternoon. All right, this, this agenda item is a resolution approving an agreement with the University of Wisconsin Eau Claire for participation in the Career Ready Internship Program in authorizing an appropriation for employment costs. The Career Ready uh, excuse me, Internship Initiative grant helps students with financial need gain the benefits of a paid internship in the Chippewa Valley. Internships must be related to the STEM field, science, technology, engineering, and math must relate to the academic major and provide a meaningful work experience to the student. They must provide an opportunity for skill development and must provide a supervisor to lead the student and provide intern evaluation. The City of Eau Claire is recognized as a leader in the water and wastewater industry throughout the region as well as the state of Wisconsin and has many experienced professionals that are dedicated to helping those who are interested in the profession. Benefits that will be recognized from having a student intern will be having an employee to accomplish short-term projects, bring current knowledge from the classroom, and new perspectives to the work environment. The Career Ready Internship Initiative grant will cover 120 hours of the internship, and the City of Eau Claire will cover the remaining 280 hours for a total of 400 hours. Because this item amends adopted budgets, a two-thirds vote of the elected members or eight affirmative votes is required for adoption. And we did conduct interviews for this position. After our interviews, we have selected Jamie Leith. She is a junior at UW-Eau Claire in the Environmental Public Health Program. And I'd like to invite her up and introduce her. So this is Jamie. And if you have any questions for myself or Jamie, please feel free to ask. Hello. <laughs> Ms. Leith, we if you don't mind, if you're comfortable, we'd certainly love to hear about what you expect for your summer internship and maybe why it interested you, if um, you're okay with that. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I just expect to get a lot of hands-on experience, um, practical experience in the field experience, um, which is different from my academic experience. Um, I really wanted to get this internship position because in my major, um, I took a class in water and wastewater and I was very, um, intrigued by it. I really enjoyed it. So I'm really looking forward to everything I'll get to experience with um, the city of Eau Claire. That sounds great. Uh, I think this is our second year 
It is correct, second year, so. that is correct. Yep. Um, so it's, it's a really great program and we're so happy that we can participate. I know that Career Ready is an important program on the university's side. Um, so it's, it's very satisfying that we can help that program be successful and help ourselves in a, what would be a true partnership. What is a true partnership? Okay. We, we plan on having her doing sampling of our uh, water from the water plant and also at the wastewater plant. And so certainly having good clean drinking water and treating wastewater is you know, important to environmental public health. So it's a good fit for her program. Absolutely. Yep. And high on our minds too, as policymakers, the water quality and wastewater treatment, uh, as you maybe already know, are high on our policy minds and we're watching carefully, so thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Questions for Mr. Burke, Council Member Von Hayden? For Mr. Peters or Mr. Burke, the question is, is uh, the 120 hours that are being funded from the university, the uh, remaining 280, I just, I, I'm a, I think it was, I'm correct, it's in our budget, and I just want to confirm that it had been included in our operating budget for 2017. Yes, that Mr. comes, uh, thank you. Uh, yes, that comes from the uh, wastewater treatment plant budget. Thank you. And I see no further questions, Mr. Burke. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. On a motion then by Councilmember Weld, seconded by Councilmember Klinkhammer, item 22 is moved. Discussion? And there being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Emanuel. Aye. Kim Kay. Aye. Klinkhammer. Aye. Mitchell. Aye. Strobel. Aye. Von Hayden. Aye. Weld. Aye. Worthman? Aye. John? Aye. Aye. And that resolution passes. Item 23 is a resolution approving the final plat for Willow Creek Estates located near the southwest corner of 93 and Double I in the town of Washington. Mr. Tufty. Uh, this is Highway 93 heading south of Eau Claire at County Double I. And this is the property. It's a former a greenhouse facility that has uh, been removed. Uh, that's the preliminary plat for the project, which was previously approved by Plan Commission. It creates seven lots for single family development. And here is uh, the final plat. It is within an area designated for two acre lots or density standard based on the agreements we have with the surrounding town. Uh, the final plat is consistent with the preliminary plat for the project and the plan commission has recommended approval. Questions for Mr. Tufty? I see none. Thank you. And on a motion by Council Member Von Hayden, seconded by Council Member Mitchell. Item 23 is moved. Discussion. That intergovernmental agreement with our towns can, can, continues to serve us well. Yeah. It does. Uh, there being no discussion, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Kincaid. Aye. Klinghammer. Aye. Mitchell. Aye. Strobel. Aye. Von Hayden. Aye. Well. Aye. Worthman. Aye. John. Aye. Beaton. Aye. Emanuel. Aye. And that resolution passes. Finally, on our business agenda is a resolution approving a site plan in a P public district for additions to Memorial High School. Mr. Tufty. Uh, we presented this to council last night. Uh, Plan Commission has recommended approval. If there's any questions, I can certainly answer them for you. Councilmember Van Hayden. Oh, <laughs> we're, we're all a little off tonight or something. <laughs> I see no question. I'm sorry for calling you to the podium. Sorry. Uh, let's see. On a motion, by, uh, I think we're around to Councilmember Strobel. Seconded by Councilmember Zhang. Item 24 is moved. Discussion? There being none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Klinghammer? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Strobel? Aye. Von Hayden? Aye. Well? Aye. 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 Zhang? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Emanuel? Aye. Okay. And that resolution passes. We have one ordinance for action tonight. Item 25 is an ordinance rezoning property on the northeast corner of Claremont and Craig Road from C3H to C3P and to adopt a general development plan for a hospital with an addition and clinic. 
and to amend the general development plan for property at 2116 Craig Road for a building addition and to amend the general development plan for property to the west for loading areas, access drive, and accessory facilities. Council members have questions regarding this uh, rezoning ordinance and related actions. On a motion then by Council Member Worthman, seconded by Council Member Emmanuel. Item 25 is moved. Discussion? And there being none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Mitchell. Aye. Strobel? Aye. Bob Hayden? Aye. Well? Aye. Worthman? Aye. Strong? Aye. Beaton? Aye. Emmanuel? Aye. Aye. And that ordinance is adopted. Uh, we have four or uh, five ordinances for introduction, which is my responsibility to read into the public record. They are as follows. An ordinance rezoning property at 2622 sessions from TR temporary 1A to R3P to adopt a general development plan for twin homes and an ordinance rezoning property at uh, south of the Mount Washington ski jump hill from R1A to P public and to adopt a site plan for a new ski jump a much taller one as I understand and an ordinance rezoning property on the west side of North Claremont, north of Colop, from C2P and TR temporary 1A to C2P, and to adopt a general development plan for the Hope Gospel Mission Men's Facility. And to rezone uh, an ordinance rezoning property at 3260 Birch Street from C1AP to C1P and to adopt a general development plan for a daycare facility off of Birch Street. And lastly, an ordinance rezoning property at 1807 Oxford Avenue from I-1, Industrial 1 and Industrial 2 to I-1P, and to adopt a general development plan for the brewing project in what is now affectionately known as the Cannery District. Does council wish to suspend the rules and take up any of these items? We do not. Announcements and directives are in order. Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, just a couple of things. One, first, thank you very much for your time yesterday at the Board of Review. I know that can be a long day, uh, but as those of you know who participated in the afternoon, we didn't make it through all of it, so uh, we are looking at June, 6, uh, June 5th, Monday, June 5th, uh, to uh, reconvene that Board of Review. So uh, look for Kathy's invitation, and uh, to the extent that you can help us out with that, we would greatly appreciate it. The other announcement would just be that Monday's Memorial Day Parade uh, from 9.30 to 11, so come on down for the parade. That's all I have. And announcements by council members. Uh, the, the chair just wants to bring to the public's attention and thank Eau Claire County for sponsoring Clean Sweep on, I think it was last Saturday, or anyway, um, Clean Sweep is sponsored three times this summer and it is a collection uh, event that is organized by the county but um, done in conjunction with uh, um, Waste treatment, WR, waste treatment. Yeah, that on 93. Um, and so residents can bring their hazardous waste from their home. It's all for residential properties. They collected 35,500 tons of, of um, well, that's not possible. Anyway, they is that possible? <laughs> by weight. Anyway, they collected a lot. They broke <laughs> records. <laughs> I thought I wrote down the data right, but whoa, what a night I'm having. I shouldn't say anything that has any you know, data in it. But they had a record year of collection, which means that the marketing is getting better and participation is getting ext extremely uh, um, much better. 
And people are paying attention and being responsible with their hazardous waste. They take paints and, any, and aerosol cans, fluorescent bulbs, batteries of, of any kind. It's a very well run and organized uh, event. And there is a little bit of waiting, but if you bring your dog along, you can walk your dog because it's right out by the old Clark County Expo. So it's, I would encourage people uh, to continue using this service. There's one more event which is located in Augusta, I believe in July, and then the a last collection, I believe in September. But you can check Eau Claire County's website. It's so important that, that those hazardous wastes do not go in the groundwater or in the ground. So congratulations to Eau Claire County for paying attention to that important service. However much it was, I have to look that up. Anyway. There being no further business to, oh, we do have a work session um, up in the North Conference Room regarding our capital improvement plan. There being no further business to come before this body on a motion by Councilmember Klinkhammer, seconded by Councilmember Von Hayden, we are adjourned without objection. This program was brought to you by a cooperation between NewsWorks and the City of Eau Claire. A transcript of this meeting is available for the hearing impaired. It will be available within seven days of this telecast. Call 715-839-4912 or TDD 715-839-1689 or write Eau Claire City Clerk, P.O. Box 5148, Eau Claire, Wisconsin 54702-5148. NewsWorks is made possible by continuing community support. If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, please contact us via phone at 715-839-5067 or online at valleymediaworks.org.